Hello there. Welcome to my show. COVID-19 update by Hirad. Uh, it's August 8th, Saturday, 2020. Um, and it's happy uh, National Bowling Day. Unfortunately, many people in America cannot go bowling uh, because it's against the law uh, in many areas. Um, you know, uh, COVID-19 is rising everywhere. We have like 50 to 70,000 cases per day. So yes, it's happy National Bowling Day, but good luck trying to find the bowling alley to go to. Yeah, that's the reality we live in. We are in COVID-19 America as of um, March 2020. This is only the beginning. We're only a few months in. Uh, we're looking at years and years and years of COVID-19. Um, yeah, and it's going to get bad uh, during the winter time. I'm not going to sugarcoat it for you. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't believe in the liberal media. <laughs> you know, liberal media is trying to lie to you and say there's going to be like a cure. There's going to be a vaccine. You know, all these lies, you know. But... Here our question came, independent candidate for U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District, that's who I am. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't believe in the liberal media. I don't believe in the fake news. Um, my prediction is that there's gonna be no working vaccine that's effective, and there's gonna be no working cure. Uh, I believe that I'm right, because there's no cure uh, for uh, HIV. I mean, you have antiviral medication that reduces the viral load, but you don't cure HIV, you don't cure AIDS, right? Every year, like hundreds of thousands of people die from HIV, AIDS, and uh, same with hepatitis uh, C. The hepatitis, you know, uh, there's no vaccine for hepatitis C. Every year, there are people dying from hepatitis C. Hepatitis, you know, like hundreds of thousands of Americans. Um, same with cancer, there's no cure for cancer. There's no vaccine for cancer, right? Um, obviously, vaccine, uh, you know, some say it's caused by virus. They say some cancers are caused by viruses. Uh, they don't know much about cancer, even though they have dedicated decades of research. But yeah, I mean, you know, for example, uh, HPV virus is supposed to uh, cause cervical cancer, right? So some cancers are caused by viruses. People just don't know exactly the mechanics about it. Uh, there's a lot of research in cancer and they know that some viruses are caused, causing cancer. So it's possible that COVID-19 can cause cancer as well. Uh, you know, there just is enough research about COVID-19 and what it can do. Uh, they know COVID-19 can uh, give you a stroke, especially in young people. They know COVID-19 19 can do something to your blood. Um, they know that COVID-19 obviously affects your respiratory system. But, you know, they say COVID-19 can do a lot of different things. So it's possible that COVID-19 can cause cancer as well. So even if you don't die of a um, respiratory virus or, you know, stroke, uh, if you had COVID, you, you, you know, you may be on the way to developing cancer. Who knows, right? No one knows right now because it's very new. Scientists don't even really understand what COVID-19 is. Uh, I'm wearing my mask because I want all of you who are going to church tomorrow to wear a mask tomorrow. Uh, you know, God works through a natural course of events. Like, even if you're Christian, if you get old, you die. You see what I'm saying? Even if you're Christian, if you... Uh, you know, uh, drink and drive, you could crash into a tree and die. You see what I'm saying? Uh, in the same way, even if you're a Christian, if you don't wear a mask, when you go to church and you yap away with other people, you're going to get COVID and die. I mean, it's possible. So I'm just reminding you all the church goers tomorrow to wear a mask. This is called a surgical mask. It's the mask that uh, nurses and doctors wear in the hospital to protect themselves from patients who have uh, conditions. Obviously with a very serious respiratory condition like 
tuberculosis, uh, they have to wear an N95 mask, which is much stronger than this mask. And for tuberculosis and you know other airborne uh, viruses, um, they have to have a room that's negative pressure, meaning they suck the viruses out. Even though they're sucking the viruses out, you still have to wear a mask. That's how bad airborne uh, viruses are. Uh, and you know, some scientists say you know COVID-19 can be airborne. Some scientists say this droplet. Droplet means you know after six feet it drops to the ground. Nobody's really sure. And there is over 30 strands of COVID-19. So some strands can be airborne, some strands can be droplet. No one knows. Okay? That is to say uh, a lot of people are gonna die. Uh, from COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Fauci said uh, COVID-19 is far worse than um, Spanish flu of 1918. Spanish flu lasted only two years and it killed over 50 million people around the world. Which means in next two years, you should expect far more than 50 million people to die from COVID. Um, I think that's an accurate assessment. I, I, uh, I think that that's what, that will happen based on science and based on history of pandemics. You know, you should expect that to happen. Um, I'm predicting that million, at least million Americans will die per month, every month during flu season uh, because there's flu, uh, you know, there's flu and there's strep flu. You know, there's all kinds of cold, common cold, you know, every year. Little children are particularly susceptible to common cold and flu. They die from common cold and flu every year, just getting common cold and flu. Yeah, little children and elderly are susceptible to common cold and flu. They could die from it. They're vulnerable. Obviously, with COVID-19, you're going to have far more children and far more adults, older adults dying. Um, so you should expect a lot of children to die in winter from, you know, common cold, flu, strep throat, croup, you know, and COVID. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of children die in the winter. So you should brace yourself because it's going to happen. Uh, and a lot of elderly will die. Um, and if you are like 40 years old and you have like asthma or diabetes, you get COVID, you probably will die during the flu season. Because during the flu season, winter time, it's not like summer, things get really bad, a lot of people die. So, uh, you know, during pandemic. So we got a little taste of that like in April, but April isn't really flu season. Flu season was over by April. So the little little taste we've got in New York, that's like nothing compared to what's coming. Uh, because it was at the tail end of flu season and, and April basically there wasn't really flu season really. But now we're gonna have a full flu season where we're gonna have COVID. So, you know, I predict that 1 million Americans will die per month. And it could be more than that, it could be 2 million Americans per month. And I don't think I'm wrong because this is summertime and we have like over 1,000 people dying every day. During flu season, we're gonna have tens of thousands of people dying every day. Uh, I think that's something that we need to count on. Um, as you know, Democratic National Convention is about a week away. It's not this Monday, it's next Monday. So it's like 17th of August. And, you know, it may be pointless because, uh, you know, <laughs> if you have 1 million people dying per month, we probably won't have an election. Uh, my prediction is that we won't have an election because so many people will be dead. Uh, and that, uh, you know, U.S. will have to declare uh, probably martial law uh, and President Trump will be in power under martial law. That's my prediction. Unless he dies from COVID, then he won't, you know, he won't be in charge, but there will be some kind of martial law. So that's my prediction, uh, that we won't have an election and that we'll probably be in a state of martial law by uh, November. Um, let's see, you know, I, hopefully, you know, I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong and that they'll have a vaccine and they'll have a cure and that no one will die, you know. I mean, you know, uh, some people believe that there's Santa Claus, you know. Yeah, I mean, this show is for adults. So, you know, um, so I can talk about it openly and I don't want to ruin children's uh, picture of Santa Claus, right? 
Um, yeah, but um, yeah, um, yeah, you should expect a lot of death uh, in winter time. Uh, they said uh, with Spanish flu of 1918, the first winter not many people died, but the second winter is when most people died. Most of the 50 million uh, people who died from uh, Spanish flu died in the second season. They had two seasons, two flu seasons, and it killed over 50 million people around the world. Two flu seasons. It wasn't 365 days a year, it was just winter time. So you can imagine how bad it's gonna get in the winter. This is a 365 days of virus. I mean, I was right, Hira Christian Kim was right from the very beginning, that COVID-19 is a 365 year of virus. And Hira Christian Kim was right, that a lot of people are dying in the summer. We have over 1,000 people dying in the summer per day. Uh, Hira Christian Kim is probably gonna be right that there's gonna be thousands of children dying in America from COVID in the flu season. I hate to be right about that, but unfortunately I think I'm right because the science. Um, yeah, I mean, it's 2020 National Convention. If for some miraculous season there's a cure or, or a, a vaccine or somehow, you know, not many people die, I don't, I don't think that would be the case, but because I think that one million people die during flu season per month, but uh, in America alone. Uh, but in case that doesn't happen and we do have election, uh, President Trump has a kind of an advantage over uh, Biden because, uh, you know, more and more Americans are pro-life. Pro, uh, Even Democrats, they, they're pro-life. And if President Trump can persuade the pro-lifers in the Democratic Party to vote for him, then he's going to have a landslide victory against Joe Biden. Um, yeah, and also a lot of Americans have a bad taste in their mouth from, you know, these violent protests where police cars were burned. Today in New York, uh, they arrested a Black Lives Matter protester, and nobody protested. Uh, that seems to mean that Black Lives Matter as a movement is over in America. It's no longer significant. Uh, I'm a historian, as you know. I'm a professional historian. Um, you know, I did my doctoral uh, studies at UCLA. Um, and I taught history uh, at Brown University and UCLA college students. But I do a lot of research into history. I presented at academic conferences. I'm a professional historian. Um, and I can tell you with confidence, Black Lives Matter as a force in America is over. Yeah, I mean, when you have a Black Lives Matter protester being arrested in New York and there's no protest, that's uh, you know basically proof positive that Black Lives Matter as a movement is over. Um, so yeah, by the time November uh, 2020 comes along, yeah, it's not going to be it's not going to be irrelevant at all. Um, and uh, I guess yesterday there was a uh, African American uh, suspect who died under police custody when he was saying, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Nobody's protesting that. I mean, the news isn't really even covering that, which is a, a second proof uh, why I think that uh, Black Lives Matter as a power is over in America. Um, yeah, I mean, things are happening very fast. Um, yeah, it's like countries shifting uh, in ways you cannot even begin to imagine. And historians and political scientists will not be able to capture what's happening to the American people, 330 million American people, until 100 years later, in hindsight, or 50 years later. Certainly not right now. It's like COVID. You cannot understand it. And no political scientist right now understands what's happening to American people in concrete terms. Because there are 330 million Americans, how are you gonna quantify what's happening to uh, 330 million Americans. So everything you're seeing in TV that's inaccurate, I don't believe in the liberal media. Um, American people are socially very conservative, far more conservative than uh, the liberal media portrays Americans to be. Uh, obviously in times of peace, you know, the silent majority, there's this kind of silent. But uh, as things start to, to happen, uh, you're going to 
start to see um, social uh, discontent expressing itself. Um, so, you know, that's going to pick up, you know, people have a certain level of tolerance, uh, and that breaks, you know, it's like, you know, patient people sometimes like explode in anger, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen any, but like who's really patient, but like when they explode, they explode. So that's coming. Uh, we don't know when that, that's going to happen as a, a, a as a side guys or popular, popular expression, but that, that's probably going to happen sometime. Um, yeah, so um, a lot of things are going to happen in the next few months. Some will be very shocking. Um, I encourage everybody to go go out and get your AK-47 uh, semi-automatic rifle uh, because you don't know what's going to happen in America. You just don't know. You don't know what's going to happen. So you need to get weapons to protect your family. Get shotguns for every member of your family, uh, AK-47s, tens of thousands of ammunition, um, and get trained to use these. Uh, I think if you're a father of children, you should definitely do that as soon as you can, because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, you, know what, you don't know what's going to happen. Look at all the crazy things that happened from March till now. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how the history is going to go. So you need to prepare. We have uh, over 1,000 people die. In the last 24 hours, we had 1,067 people die. Um, yeah, and so our death is at 162,395. Let me remind you, we are in summer. This is August 8th, and we're having over 1,000 people die. There's no flu, right? And we have 1,067 are dying in summertime. That's very important point to remember because in the winter time, people are going to drop dead left and right. You're going to see what I mean. Uh, because you know New York, that was like April. That, that wasn't flu season. That was post flu season. So New York's going to have so many people die this winter. It's not even going to be funny. Um, yeah, I mean, over one million New Yorkers may die this winter. We'll see. Um, yeah, confirmed cases are at 4,995,369. Uh, this is summertime and we're getting like, what, 50 to 70,000 cases in the winter time. We may get like 300,000 cases per day or more. Yeah, people are going to be dropping dead left and right. You will see what I mean. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's going to be horrific. Uh, obviously you don't remember the flu. Spanish flu of 1918, right? I would encourage you to watch videos on it. Like, you know, you could go to YouTube and type in Spanish flu 1918, and then watch videos on it just to get a picture of what kind of death is coming to America in 2020 flu season. You know, I'm predicting there won't be an election because we're gonna have millions of Americans dead, and we're just gonna go into martial law. And if President Trump is dead, then, you know, I guess it would be Vice President Pence. If Vice President Pence is dead, I don't know who's the next person in line. A lot of people are going to die, including politicians. Um, I hope President Trump doesn't die, or Vice President Pence don't die, because I like them. But and, you know, um, yeah, but you know, you never know what's going to happen. Okay, you gotta expect the unexpected. You never know. I mean, both President Trump and Vice President uh, Biden may be dead before November 3rd. You don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. This is COVID-19 is killing a lot of people. So you got to brace yourself. Uh, you don't know what's coming. And, you know, just take my advice, get that AK-47, several of them for yourself, your wife, your children, just in case, because you know what, what if a mob invades your home and starts raping your children, right? Uh, you, you need to protect yourself, right? So I would encourage you to, you know, get protection uh, because at the end of the day, we saw from a George Floyd protest, the police cannot protect you. If there's mob violence, you have to protect yourself. So think of yourself as being wild, wild, way less potentially. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, if something like George Floyd protests are much, 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 much worse happens, then at least you prepared uh, with AK-47s, you got trained, you have to use it. 
you get enough ammunition, so you know, you, you, uh, you know, you can protect yourself. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, I hate to give you this advice that you need it, but uh, I think we are there. There's a lot of things can happen, I and mean, we could have another, another George Floyd protest happen. That's you can't rule that out. That could happen. It could happen with different groups. It could be. It was like African American movement. You could have a Hispanic movement. I mean, you know, anything would happen. We don't know what's going to happen. That's the most scariest thing about uh, this winter. We don't know what's coming. We just do not know what's coming. Um, so, you know, obviously, make sure you go to church or pray with your family members, have daily worship. Um, yeah, I mean, you need to be right with God during this, this uncertain time. Only Jesus is true, and Bible is the word of God. Only God can protect you. Uh, so, and also, if you die, only God can let you into heaven. So, I will focus on being right with God. That's the most important thing right now for you and your family. Be right with God because you don't know what's going to happen. Um. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say you should expect to die in the winter. If you don't, great. But you should prepare as if you're gonna die. Like you should prepare well, you should prepare to have your friends or relatives raise your children. You can reciprocate. You could say, like, you know, if you have a you know brother, you could say, if me and my wife dies this um, winter and you and your wife is alive, then raise our children. But if you and your children, your wife dies, then I will raise your children. You know, you need to make arrangements before winter. I mean, it may seem like it's not important, but it is because you could die. Your children can be orphaned. It's better to prepare. If it doesn't happen, great, but it can happen. So you need to get down and, and prepare. Uh, you know, this is serious stuff, COVID-19. As you know, from a spiritual angle, I hear our Christian came independent candidate for U.S. Congress in Virginia's 8th District is saying, reading Romans chapter one, COVID-19 is judgment of God on America for homosexuality. So until you illegalize homosexuality, this judgment of God will continue. Um, so you should expect a lot of that because God is God of judgment. If you read the book of Exodus, he sent 10 plagues to Egypt. He killed a lot of people in Egypt because it's a plague. So just look at COVID-19 as a plague from God uh, because America has legalized homosexuality and abortion uh, gay marriage and God is angry. And Romans chapter 1 clearly shows God's hatred of homosexuals uh, and homosexuality. Uh, and so you need to kind of focus on that. God's killing a lot of people. A lot of people are dying, you know, um, everywhere. Now COVID-19 is spreading on to, to Midwest just in time for flu season. And obviously you're going to see this as an act of God. Because only God can control the spread of uh, viruses. Obviously, God can stop it, but God's refusing to stop COVID. God's making sure that over 1,000 people are dying from COVID every day in the summer as a warning to Americans. So you should heed God's warning because death is coming. I mean, my recommendation is that you legalize homosexuality as soon as possible to avoid the wrath of God. I mean, we have a wrath of God now, but avoid greater wrath of God that's coming in the winter. But, you know. And I would encourage all of you pastors uh, in America to preach against homosexuality tomorrow from the pulpit. You need to preach Romans chapter 1 because that's what God wants you to do. God doesn't want you to talk about comfort. That's not what God wants. This is the wrath of God from a Romans chapter angle. And only repentance will save you. God's not going to listen to your prayers for help unless you repent of homosexuality in America. And repentance means you got to illegalize it. Repentance means turning away from sin to God. As a nation, United States, we need to illegalize it or God's not going to consider you as being a repentant person. So the greatest thing you're going to do tomorrow is to preach against homosexuality, call for illegalization of homosexuality. Because that is repentance. You can ask God to help you. He's not going to help you. That's in the book of Jeremiah's. Uh, just read the book of Jeremiah from chapter 1 to the end, and you, you uh, understand what I'm saying. God's not going to listen to your prayer to help you. He's not. Because this is judgment of God, meaning this is what God wants to do to you and your family. 
as a wrath of God, as a punishment. So you can ask God, please turn this away. He's not going to do it. Read the book of Jeremiah from beginning to end, and you will see what I'm saying. Uh, as you know, uh, I'm an expert theologian. I've been trained as a professional theologian. I, I train seminarians who studied to be pastors in India. I'm an adjunct professor um, of a, a Christian university that trains pastors, and you know, they train other people too. But um, yeah, so I could say with 100% certainty, God will not listen to your prayer, turn this away from your family and you. It's not. Uh, until you give God what he wants, which is uh, illegalization of homosexuality by national, state, and city law. If your city hasn't illegalized it, if your state hasn't illegalized it, if your country hasn't illegalized it, then God's going to continue his judgment. That's the, just the way God is. Uh, so read the book of Jeremiah to understand how God acts. So you can pray all you want. God's not going to listen to your prayer. Uh, that's in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, so, you know, yeah, pray all you want and say, God, help us, protect us. He's not going to do it. Right, that's the book of Jeremiah. You need to give God what he wants, or he's not going to give you what you want. It's very simple. God's love is always conditional. God told Adam and Eve, if you eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you will surely die. When Adam and Eve ate of the fruit of the tree of good and um, evil, I mean, although they were sad and repentant and sorry for what they did, God still killed them. Picked them out of the garden of you. That's just, God is a mean guy. God is, God is mean. Now that, why do you think God kicked Adam and Eve out of the garden of Eden? And Eve? You know, you don't think Adam and Eve were sorry for what they did? Of course they were. It doesn't matter how sorry you are. You need to do things that's going to please God. If you don't, he's not going to give you what you want. You don't think Adam and Eve wanted to stay in the Garden of Eden forever and have eternal life forever? God took that away. Why? Because that's who God is. God is mean. You need to give God what he wants. So tomorrow, you need to preach against homosexuality because that's what God wants. God wants homosexuality to be legalized. God wants all the pastors and churches to preach against homosexuality. Romans chapter 1. If you don't do that, Forget about it. You know, you, you don't expect God to protect you from COVID. It's going to spread all over Midwest. It's going to kill thousands, maybe millions in the Midwest. God's not going to protect you. You can pray all you want. God protect us. God protect us. God's not going to protect you. And that principle is found in, uh, in Jeremiah. Read the book of Jeremiah and understand where God stands. Um, Christians think God loves them unconditionally. You're absolutely wrong. God does not love you unconditionally. God will punish you if you don't give God what he wants. Very simple. So pray all you want tomorrow at church and talk about how much God loves you. That's not going to help you from COVID. Uh, because God is love, but God is also uh, judgment. Um, and God is judging you and your family and your children for not illegalizing gay marriage. So you're the target of God's judgment. I'm talking to all you evangelical Christians out there who uh haven't lifted a finger to illegalize homosexuality. This is God's judgment of you. So you could ask God to turn away COVID. He's not going to because he wants to judge you. This is what God wants to do to you and your family. Give you COVID. Um, you know, that this is what God's doing to you and your family. I'm talking to all the evangelical Christians out there. Because you're not giving God what he wants. Don't expect God to protect you from COVID. All you evangelical Christians out there. God's not going to protect you from COVID. Um, yeah, I not going to take this thing away because this is wrath of God promised in Romans chapter one. God's keeping his promise to you by giving you and your children COVID. This is God's promise. God keeps his promises. Give God what he wants and that's illegalization by law at the local, state, and federal level of homosexuality. You don't give God what he wants, he's not going to give you what you want. You can cry, cry and pray all you want, he's not going to give it to you. That's in the book of Jeremiah. Um, and I'm 100% sure about that. So, um, yeah, because just read the book of Jeremiah. Don't believe my words, read the Bible. Be like Bereans. You know, don't listen to your pastor who's going to tell you God loves you with, regardless of what you do. Because that's a lie. He's lying to you. Because the Bible doesn't say that. You've got to follow the Bible. Um, yeah, like, I'm flying the Confederate flag behind me because the Bible says slavery is not sin. 
Yeah, there's nothing that Confederacy stood for in terms of slavery that was sin before God. So I have no problem flying the Confederate flag because slavery is not sin in, in the Bible. It's not just in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament. St. Paul called the uh, Onesimus to go back uh, to his flag master. So any Christian pastor who says, don't fly Confederate flag, do not donate a penny to him. Do not donate a penny. Because Confederate flag and its representation of slavery is supported by the New Testament. So if a Christian pastor tells you, don't fly your Confederate flag, do not give him a penny. Leave that church. Because obviously he doesn't respect God. He doesn't respect the New Testament. He doesn't respect the words of St. Paul that told Onesimus the slave to go back to his slave master. He doesn't agree with New Testament. He doesn't agree with God. So yeah, don't give a penny to a pastor who says don't fly your Confederate flag. I encourage every Virginian to fly a Confederate flag. Every single Virginian family, if you're, if you're kind of afraid to fly it outside your home, just fly it in your home. You know, um, like I'm flying it right now. Um, yeah, because, you know, Confederacy did nothing wrong in terms of supporting uh, slavery. There's nothing wrong in supporting slavery because New Testament says slavery is not wrong. So, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, fly your Confederate flag. That's the right thing to do. Um, because, you know, look at all those people who are against the uh, Confederacy and slavery. They, they want to legalize gay marriage and homosexuality. They call it marriage equality. So obviously those people are wrong, right? If the same people who are against slavery support homosexuality, then you know their movement is wrong. You can't be part of that. You see what I'm saying? You will know them by their fruit. If the same people who oppose slavery support homosexuality, then you know their movement is not something you should be part of. You understand what I'm saying? Because Bible is very clear in Romans chapter 1 about homosexuality. Anyone who supports homosexuality obviously cannot be people that you can be part of. Right? If the same people who, who, are, get, who are against slavery are for homosexuality, then you know their movement is wrong from the word of God. The proof is in the pudding. Well, what are you going to decide with them or side with God? So, um, yeah, that's how you know. If the people who say slavery is wrong and they turn around and tell you, oh, yeah, but homosexuality is okay, then you know the whole movement is wrong. You've got to reject the whole movement. Yeah, because the whole movement is supporting Satan's cause, right? Anything that says oh, homosexuality is okay or marriage equality is important, that's a satanic movement. By definition, because it's against Romans chapter 1. It's against the creator God who made them male and female, Adam and Eve. You cannot be part of that movement. It doesn't matter who represents that movement. Um, as I said, you know, if President Trump supports LGBTQ movement, I will, I will fight to make sure he loses by landslide in November uh, 3rd. Because homosexuality is evil according to Romans chapter 1. Uh, are you going to follow President Trump or are you going to follow the Bible? I like President Trump, but if, if he supports LGBTQ, then he has made himself into a traitor to uh, Christianity, an uh, enemy to the Christian gospel. Literally, Romans chapter 1, he's made himself into an opposition force against Romans chapter 1. But we cannot vote for him. No Christian can vote for President Trump if he supports LGBTQ. It's very simple that, as that. Obviously, you cannot support uh, Joe Biden because uh, he supports gay marriage. So you have to write in a name of someone who doesn't support homosexuality or vote for a candidate who may not be Republican or Democrat, who supports um, God's word uh, and opposes homosexuality. Right? You either vote for someone on the ballot who's against homosexuality or you're writing their name. You cannot vote for Biden because he's for homosexuality and if President Bush, uh, Trump is uh, for homosexuality, you cannot vote for him. It's very, very simple. This, you know, um, Bible says the morality, the Romans chapter one is in the New Testament in the age of grace. Uh, so we need to follow the New Testament uh, and submit to the word of God. I mean, do you want to live? Do you want to survive COVID-19 or not? God's not going to take COVID-19 away until homosexuality is illegalized in America. Very simple. Okay, you do what you want, but Bible's very clear. Okay, so you may disagree with the Bible. You may not like the fact that God is this way. 
in Romans chapter one, but that's who God is. That's how God is. That's how God's going to be. So you do what you want, but expect um, you know God to do what He wants. God has His freedom. You have your freedom, right? Um, top five uh, cases uh, in Latin America. Look at this. Latin Americans are dying like 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 flies. Brazil has 2,962,442 cases, death by 99,572. 100,000 Brazilians have died so far. You know, I mean, geez, think about that. And we're just, this is just the beginning. You're looking at years and years of COVID. How many would you think would die in Brazil at the end of this? Number two is Mexico. Mexico has 475,902 cases. Their death rate is 11%. You know God doesn't like Mexico. I and mean, look at all the other South American countries. Death rate is 3%, 4%, 3%. Mexico has 11%. I mean, geez, talk about a country that God doesn't like. I mean, a country with like 11% death rate. I mean, obviously God doesn't like the country, right? I mean, you know, if God liked uh, Mexico, the death rate would be like 1% or less than 1%. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. Mexico is doing something wrong. You need to repent. Because, you know, numbers don't lie. God, God is in control of the world. So whatever is happening in the world, God is controlling it. God knows what he's doing. Okay, obviously, Mexico is not right with God. Thereby, God's punishing Mexico in a serious way. It's very simple, right? Like maybe Mexicans in America are very pro-gay marriage, but obviously God's going to retaliate against Mexicans um, in a way that shows specifically how much God doesn't like that. You see what I'm saying? God sends message through his judgment. Uh, and you can see that in the book of, uh, uh, in the Bible, in all the books. So I'd encourage you to read it, especially if you're Mexican-American, because you're doing something wrong. Um, you need to think of the world in spiritual terms, not in terms that you as a human being want to think about, uh, ignoring the fact that God exists. God exists and God's in control. You need to think about the world in those terms, God-centric terms. How is God acting? What does he want? What does God want? This is the way the Mexicans in America should be thinking and talking, especially in church tomorrow. What you think, what you want doesn't matter. What God wants matters, right? You gotta humble yourself before God. Stop talking about what you want. Start talking about what God wants from you, from your church, from your community. Um, yeah, Peru is number three. Um, they have 463,875 cases. Uh, they have 20,649 who have died. So Peru is no innocent, right? Their death rate is 4%, it's not as bad as Mexico. But 20,000 have died in Peru, it's a smaller country. Uh, and a lot of people are gonna die. People are gonna continue to die. You need to be right with God. So all the Hispanic churches tomorrow in America, you should preach against homosexuality, gay marriage. You must not vote for Democratic Party. Unless you want God to continue what he's doing, judging your home countries in Latin America. Don't vote Democrat. It's very important. Because Democratic Party stands for what? Gay marriage, which God hates, Romans chapter one, and abortion, killing babies. God doesn't want that. But do not vote Democrat. Until Democratic Party changes and homosexuality is no longer the official platform, of the Democratic Party and abortion is not official platform of the Democratic Party. You cannot vote for the Democrats. I mean, you know, you do what you want. I'm, the, I'm just telling you from a biblical perspective, spiritual perspective, where God stands, right? I mean, you read the Bible and ask yourself, what does God want from, from me? What does God want from the world? What does God want from our church? What does God want from our, our uh, community? That's why you should be asking because what you want doesn't really matter. What God wants matters. You see what I'm saying? Stop trying to be God and saying what I want matters the most. No. What does God want from you? What does God want from your community? What does God want from your church? That's what's important. Not what you want. What God wants. Um, 
Chile has 371,023 uh, cases, uh, and it's number four. And the death is at 10,011, 3% are dying. So Chile is no joke. You saw yesterday, and those of you who haven't seen my show yesterday, go back to see my show. There are Arab, uh, Arabs not dying. We have like 100 deaths in some Arabic countries. Why is that? Because Muslims kill all homosexuals by national law. That's what Deuteronomy and Leviticus wants. That's what Romans chapter 1 wants. Right? For 2,000 years of Christian history, Christian history has killed homosexuals by, by court, order, national law. That's what God expects of Christian nations. All nations, not just Christian nations, Buddhist nations, Hindu nations, Muslim nations. But Muslim nations are following the word of God in what God wants them to do to homosexuals. So in Saudi Arabia, if you're homosexual, they'll execute you. That's why God is being, being merciful and generous and blesses Arabic countries, Muslim countries. They're following the Ten Commandments. If you do not follow Ten Commandments, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, Jewish, Hindu, Buddhist, is Muslim or Christian, God will punish you for violating the Ten Commandments. Very, very important principle. It is because Muslim countries are following the Ten Commandments and executing homosexuals using the court system. That's why God is blessing them and protecting them from COVID, right? Unfortunately, these nations in Latin America, they're not following God's law. God wants homosexuality banned, illegalized. God wants homosexuals arrested and processed through the court system with the minimum mandatory death uh, sentence of death penalty. Obviously, Brazil is not doing that. Mexico is not doing that. Peru is not doing that. So you understand why, why there's like a lot of death. Because God wants these Latin American countries to, to follow the Ten Commandments and follow the law of God. For 2,000 years of Christian history, that has been the operative principle because that's what God wants. You think God just changed overnight? No, he's an eternal being. He never changes. Uh, he's saying yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And that's our human lingo. God doesn't have time. God's outside of time. God is always the same. God always is. That's why God said, I am who I am. He doesn't change. Colombia uh, is number five. Uh, and um, it has uh, 367,196 cases. Uh, death rate is um, 3% and 12,540 have died. So things are really bad. You see me talking with my mask on. Don't take your mask on tomorrow at church to talk to people. You talk to people through your mask. That's the whole point. Because right? if you lift your mask, you're going to get COVID and die. If you get COVID, you could die. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to help you out here because I created this show to save you and your children from COVID-19 death. So I give you good advice. Obviously, you do what you want. You're not a slave. You're free to do what you want. But remember, there are consequences to whatever you do. There are consequences to your family, there are consequences to your children for what you do. But don't forget that. You're free to do what you want, but there are consequences. Uh, and God is free to do what he wants. And God chooses to punish you for supporting homosexuality. doesn't matter what your race is. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter what your nation is. It doesn't matter what your religion is. If you support homosexuality, God's going to punish you and your, your children. Um, and your nation. Um, yeah. So uh, I thought this is important to talk about because this is summertime. And yes, we're supposed to enjoy summer and I encourage you to enjoy summer. But we do need to think about what's coming in the fall and the winter. That's something that we do need to think about and talk about. Not enough people are talking about it. And that's a problem. But it's coming in a few weeks. The fall is coming in a few weeks. We need to talk about it. And I don't believe in the liberal media. Uh, liberal media is promising you this and promising you that. It's not going to happen. My prediction is that we're not going to have a vaccine that works for years and years and years, just like HIV virus or hepatitis C virus. You're not going to have a vaccine. People are going to die. Every year in America, before COVID-19, 
We have hundreds of thousands of people die from HIV AIDS every year and hepatitis C every year. Every, every year, every year, hundreds of thousands of people die from cancer. This is even before COVID-19. So if you think we're gonna have a cure for COVID-19, you're, you're like grossly mistaken. You know how long they've been trying to find a cure for all these other things? Cancer, HIV, hepatitis C, you know, uh, herpes, you know. If you think it's that easy to find a cure, how come we don't have cure for like so many things? They say over 98 diseases we don't have cure for. Are you telling me that somehow we're gonna find a cure for COVID-19? Are you kidding me? Listen to yourself. You're gonna have a cure for COVID-19 in a few months? When 98% of diseases in the world doesn't have a cure? Who, who died and made you God? You see what I'm saying? It's ridiculous thinking that you're gonna have a cure for COVID-19 in a few months when 98% of all diseases in the world don't have a, a cure. How are you gonna find a cure for COVID? It's ridiculous. I mean, that's the kind of lie that liberal media feeds you, fake news feeds you. You know, you gotta, you gotta stick with the truth. God is God of truth, right? Liberal media is fake news. They do not have truth. Obviously, I march for life. I want you to live. I want your children to live. Um, so I try to give you the best advice possible. I'm not gonna promise you lies, like cure. That's a lie. Anybody who promises you, oh, there's gonna be a cure, it's a charlatan. There's no commitment, it's not gonna be a cure. Are you kidding me? What, if you, if, oh yeah, if, if you go to a hospital with cancer, and they say, oh, I'm gonna cure you of cancer, you're gonna believe them? You know, don't be ridiculous. There's not gonna be a cure for COVID-19. There's a 99.999999 chance there will never be a cure for, for COVID. So don't listen to these people who are saying there's going to be a cure for can uh, a cancer or, or, or COVID. They're lying to you. I mean, your cancer research has been going over decades. All the best hospitals, all the best minds have been working on a cure. They have not found it. Um, yeah, so if they tell you they're going to have a cure for COVID, that's a lie. Fake news. Do not believe them. But they think you're stupid. That's why they're telling you there's going to be a cure. Um, just look at the science, you know? I mean, geez, anybody can say there can be a cure, but reality is completely different. Same with the vaccine. People will tell you there's gonna be a vaccine, but show me the proof, show me the money. You know, uh, you remember the movie, show me the money, show me the money. Uh, you know, that was like, what, what movie was that? Show me the money movie. Yeah, until they show you the money, there's no, no truth in saying that there's there's gonna be a vaccine. I mean, geez, maybe there's a fountain of youth, right? You can say whatever you you want. Does that make it a fact? Do you think there is a fountain of youth? Do you see what I'm saying? I don't believe in fake news. And anybody who promises you there's gonna be a vaccine is a liar. There's not gonna be a vaccine. If if somebody promises you there definitely will be a vaccine, that's a lie, that's a lie, it's a liar. Um, well, if there's a vaccine, great, but until there's an actual vaccine, don't lie to me and tell me that there's gonna be a vaccine, right? That's not helpful. Like believing in a lie or believing in something that most likely will not be, is not gonna save you and your children. We gotta live in reality and deal with reality. If vaccine comes into existence, great. But as far as we know, no vaccine is coming into existence. Obviously, I encourage scientists to work hard to develop a vaccine. I'm just saying they're gonna fail. All of them are gonna fail. Because all of them have failed to develop vaccine against cancer. All of them have failed to develop can field vaccine against the common cold. All of them have failed to develop a vaccine against um, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah, in a few months, you think we'll develop a vaccine. Are you kidding me? You know, live in the real world, people. Um, yeah. So, what can we expect during October, November, December? COVID state. I mean, everywhere you go, there's going to be COVID everywhere. COVID is not spreading to Midwest. Like, 
Wisconsin at the highest cases of COVID today, over 1,000. It's going to spread. Uh, Ohio has like over 1,000 cases. I mean, it's spreading all over the Midwest. And you know how cold it gets in the Midwest in the winter, like with all that snow? So many people are going to die in the Midwest. It's not even going to be funny this winter. Because it's spreading now. They're not trying to stop it. They're not trying to stop it. Uh, the curve. You know? I mean, if you have anything over 100 cases per day, I mean, geez, you're looking at death, death, death. Is the flu season. Um, yeah, so there's going to be no bowling. Uh, obviously, breakfast, lunch, dinner, restaurants, there's no going not going to be like sit and dining in restaurant. Because COVID-19 spreads from people to people. When waiter serves you or waitress serves you, you get COVID. You know, it's very simple as that. It's people to people transmission. You know, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and then what else are we going to expect? Your child die. That's something that you, you should expect uh, or, or uh, it's a possibility. If your child is going to kindergarten, elementary school, you, can, you may be seeing your child looking like that before your child dies. It's a high possibility because COVID-19 is spreading like wildfire. As I said, United States of America proliferates homosexuality. It hasn't illegalized it. Therefore, God's not going to protect your child. Doesn't matter how good of a Christian you are. Uh, if you don't stand against homosexuality, God's not going to protect your child. So expect your child to die from COVID if you don't fight against homosexuality. Doesn't matter if you go to church every Sunday. Doesn't matter if you're a car carrying evangelical Christian. If you're not fighting homosexuality, expect your child to die if they, he can. I mean, hopefully your child doesn't die, but expect it. Because wrath of God is wrath of God. You think just because you go to an evangelical church, just because you call yourself a Baptist, that's not going to judge you when you don't stand against homosexuality and obedience to Romans chapter 1? Are you kidding me? Who do you think God is? Do you think God, God is a joke? Do you think God's law is a joke? Do you think Romans chapter 1 is a joke? Do you think God is God who's joking around? Read the Bible. Do you think all of that is a joke? Read about the 10 plagues of Egypt. Do you think that was a joke? Yeah. You need to be right with God. And if you're not fighting homosexuality, you're not right with God. You're not right with God. Because Romans chapter 1 is very clear. Another thing that happen is your child may be intubated like that. You have tubes all over uh, because your child gets COVID. Uh, Georgia had, what, seven-year-old die uh, yesterday? Yes, a lot of children are dying. They're going to, and this is summertime, waiting until winter. Children will be dropping dead like flies from COVID-19 from cold, flu, combination of these things, thousands of children will die in every state. Just watch. I mean, obviously, I don't want this thing to happen. That's why I'm telling everybody, all the schools to close and have children learning from home to prevent spread of COVID among children. You know? I mean, obviously, you're free to open up your school if you want. But expect children to die when you open up schools. But this is what I said in April, did I? I say, you can open up your state all you want. You're free to open up, but expect the cases to go up. What happened? States opened up, Georgia opened up. You remember in, in, in April, May, Georgia's like, oh, we don't have any cases. We don't have any cases. We're just going to open up. And I said, well, open up. But if you open up, cases will go up. You should expect that you're free to do what you want, but cases will go up. Do you remember me saying this in uh, April? Uh, as you know, this show, COVID-19 Update by Hirag is a daily show started on uh, April 2nd, just go and watch all the reruns, right? You could watch it through YouTube, Hirak Christian Kim uh, for Congress YouTube channel. And you can watch all these episodes for April where I said this. Everything I said came true. And I expect what I'm saying now about thousands of children dying in every state, that will come true too. As you open up your schools, of course they're going to die. Of course they're going to get COVID and die. Well, what do you think? God's judgment is like not effective? Is, does your state, did your state illegalize gay marriage and homosexuality? Well, then, your state is not right with God. So why do you think God's going to protect your children? God's not going to protect your children. Doesn't matter if you go to church every Sunday. Doesn't matter if you call yourself Baptist. It doesn't matter if you're a truly born again Christian. If you don't fight homosexuality, you should expect God's wrath to visit you and your children. It's very simple. This is the principle of the Bible. Romans chapter 1, it doesn't matter if you're born again Christian. God will not protect you from COVID-19. 
if you don't fight homosexuality, expect your children to get COVID and die like that. That's what you should expect. Not only will not God not protect you, God will give your children COVID. Expect it. If you're an evangelical Christian who doesn't fight homosexuality, expect it. Okay? This is the biblical principle. God, God punishes believers who don't follow his word. Who are adamant about not following his word. Romans chapter 1 is there. You're not going to fight homosexuality. Then you should expect God to send the wrath of God that he promised in Romans chapter 1. Why, don't, why do you believe that God will not do what he promised to do? Why do, you, why do you think God's not going to keep his promise against your family? As I said, tomorrow, every church in America should be preaching against homosexuality. Other message is useless right now. You need to pro preach against homosexuality. Your priority number one is to legalize homosexuality. That's why you should be preaching in your church. Any church that's not preaching against homosexuality tomorrow, you should just leave that church. There's no point going to that church. That church is not right with God. If you go to a church that has never preached against homosexuality, just leave. Because that church is not meeting your spiritual needs. That church is not going to be doing anything for you. Because Romans chapter 1 is in the New Testament. God expects you to keep that. Um, yeah. Um, other things that you could expect uh, through COVID-19 era um, is conflict rising between China and America. And some people who, uh, you know, study Revelation says that this is a fulfillment of the prophecy. Uh, you know, you can read through the book of Revelation yourself and see if it is a fulfillment of the, book, uh, you know, Revelation's prophecy. Um, you know, Holy Spirit guides every believer. So you can read the Bible and Holy Spirit guides you. You don't need another person to tell you what the Bible says, really. Uh, obviously, when the preacher is there, you can compare what the preacher is saying to the Word of God. Um, you know, and if, if the preacher is saying something that's not in the Word of God, then you should, you should go with the Bible, right? It's very simple. And that's like the Bereans. So the conflict between China and uh, U.S. will continue to grow. Some say that this is a um, fulfillment of a prophecy. You read through the book of Revelation and see how the Holy Spirit speaks to you. Um, obviously, you know, uh, uh, many true Christians believe that America is a Christian nation and we should bring America back to God. We should legalize homosexuality. That's what true Christians believe. I'm a true Christian. That's why I believe that. If you don't believe that, then you're not a true Christian. Uh, according to the word of God, according to the principles of Romans chapter 1. Um, and you should expect to go to hell when you die from COVID. If you don't believe that homosexuality should be legalized, that means you're not truly born again. Because obviously, Romans chapter 1 is very clear about homosexuality. If you don't agree with Romans chapter 1, that means you're not truly born again. Right? Because Holy Spirit is not working inside of you. Um, yeah, so that's how you know if you're not truly born again. You know, if you are wondering. Like, if you don't feel anything against homosexuality, then you're not truly born again because the Holy Spirit is not in you. If the Holy Spirit were in your heart, then you would have a Christian conscience. So when you read the Bible, Romans chapter 1, that would speak to you. But if you read Romans chapter 1 and you're still like, hey, it's okay, then obviously you're not a true Christian. It doesn't matter if you're a pastor. It doesn't matter if you're an elder. It doesn't matter if you're a deacon. Romans chapter 1, if it doesn't speak to you, you're not a true Christian because you don't have Holy Spirit in your heart. That's why you're not convicted by Romans chapter 1. Faith is a gift of God, and God doesn't give the faith to everybody. God doesn't give his gift to everybody. Um, so that's how you know. So when you die and you feel nothing about homosexuality, expect to go to eternal damnation and hell according to the principles found in the Bible, Romans chapter 1, because you're not truly born again. There are people who go to church all their life who go to hell. Because they're not truly born again. It's a gift of God. You may not have that gift. You know? Who in the church doesn't save you? It's the faith in Jesus Christ that saves you. And the sign that you are truly in Jesus Christ is Holy Spirit convicting you in your heart. And if Romans chapter 1 doesn't convict you in your heart, then you're not truly born again. There's no Holy Spirit in your heart. So you may like the idea of Christianity, but that doesn't mean you're truly born again. That doesn't mean you're going to go to heaven. A lot of people like different ideas. Being truly born again means you're convicted in your heart when you read the Bible. And I'm telling you, show up to show, read Romans chapter 1. If it doesn't convict you, then you're not truly born again. You know, it's simple as that. It's not that complicated. Christianity is not that complicated. 
God created the world. God gave the word of God. God gave the Ten Commandments. If you believe in God, you, you believe that the Bible is God's word and try to follow his word. It's that simple. It's not that hard. It's not that complicated. If you're a true Christian, that you want to conform your life, uh, if you want to follow God's word. You're a sinner, so you continue sinning, but you, you want to try. Right? If you don't even want to try, that means you're not truly born again. It's simple as that. Christianity is not complicated. It's very simple. Um, yeah, uh, CDC, um, uh, you know, um, they're predicting a big uh, second wave, which is going to be taking a lot of people's lives. That's like this winter, that's October, November, December. Uh, and um, I don't know, Joe Biden looks like he's crying. Maybe, maybe you know, he has a premonition that he's going to die before election day from COVID. Who knows? I don't know what Vice President Biden is thinking over there, but he's like squinting and he like, looks really worried. Only God knows what Biden is thinking. Only God knows what President Trump is thinking, right? God knows everybody's heart. Um, and UK Prime Minister warns of COVID-19 second wave. Yes, it's coming. Look at the cases. We have over 1,000 people dying every day right now. All the cases are going on in Europe. It's going up in Italy. It's going up in France. It's going up in Spain. It's going up in England. Just in time for um, the flu season. Yeah, they're going to be hit hard, hard too. Um, yeah, you know, as, as you know, uh, I, um, you know, I, you know, I'm done at Georgetown University. You know, our last day of classes was Friday. So I'm out of here. I am out of here, you know. Uh, so, so yeah, Friday was our last day of classes and I'm, I'll be working at um, Virginia Hospital Center. So I'm really excited about that. I'll be saving your lives at Virginia Hospital Center. Um, and you know, there's like 25 of us who are pinned in May, uh, and um, you know, I'm predicting that uh, five to ten of us, like you know, around 20% or more, will die from COVID before Christmas. I think that's definitely possible because October, November, December, we have a lot of deaths. Right now, we have like thousand a day. In October, we may have like 10,000 or more a day. Uh, yeah, that's all coming. I mean, like schools just opened last week. And like dozens of people are getting infected or you know they're showing signs already it takes generally like 14 days to show signs but i mean you could start showing signs as early as a couple of days um yeah so i mean geez you know can you imagine if you are infected and you're coming to school for 14 days during the 14 days you're infecting like other people can you imagine that's how it spreads yeah just because you're not showing the signs doesn't mean you're not infecting other people. By the time you discover that you, you have COVID, it's too late. You've infected like dozens of people or maybe even hundreds of people, uh, especially in a school setting it's where it's crowded. Uh, so yes, expect thousands of students uh, in every state to die this uh, winter. Uh, that's gonna happen. It's science, you know, it's like science. I mean, it's not like I'm trying to make things up. This COVID-19 is killing 1,000 people per day. Uh, and if in crowded places, it's going to spread. I mean, what's so complicated about that? Life is not that complicated, people. This is a virus that kills people and spreads from people to people. If you're like crowding around in a school together, of course you're going to get it and you're going to die from it. I mean, it's not that complicated. You know what I'm saying? Um, so um, obviously nurses work with COVID-19 patients uh, you know, for 12 hours. Uh, and those are the highest chance of getting COVID. And that's why a lot of nurses will die. That's why I'm predicting that, uh, you know, you went from five to 10 of us, 20 to 40% of us in COVID, clinical nurse leader program at Georgetown will die. I mean, I, obviously I don't want them to die. I want, I don't, I want them to live. Um, but you know, if you have asthma, uh, you know, diabetes, or if you're overweight, like fat, or you have peanut allergy, or you know, some, some kind of condition that makes your immune system vulnerable, then you have the chance that you'll die. Um, I mean, if you have asthma, you know how asthma attacks are like, right? So you can imagine how easy it is for you to die if you get COVID-19. 
because you've experienced asthma attacks. So, um, yeah, I mean, so, you know, I mean, that's how painful it will be, but it's going to be painful like that until you die. If you if you experience asthma attacks as an asthmatic, yeah, it, it's going to be painful. I'm not going to kid you. This thing is death waiting to happen. That's why I'm saying we should have 100% classes online, that you should be confined to your home and you should voluntarily want to stay at home if you want to live. Parents should work at home, try to have, you know, 100% of the working at home, and then you should socialize only with your family. Don't like talking to other people. That's how you get COVID. I, if you don't train yourself to do this during winter time, you're looking at death, looking like in death. Yeah, because it's not, this is summer. This is the time you should be prepared for winter. Do you know, remember the story of ant and grasshopper? Uh, the ant worked during the summer, to store food so that the ant could eat in the winter. The grasshopper, you know, hopped around and played and did not have food in the winter. Now, think of this in terms of COVID-19 survival. Here is summer. Obviously, you should enjoy your summer, and I'm encouraging you to enjoy your summer. But you need to start practicing survival for the winter, right? As I said, you should be socializing only with your family members. And you should not, you should be isolating yourself from other people. You should practice that now. Because when winter comes, when COVID spreads like wildfire, if you practice in the summer with your children, especially if you have children who are like young, then in the winter time, they'll be habituated to that practice, so you'll survive. But if you like socialize and play with everybody right now in the summer, like grasshopper, by the time winter comes, you're not going to be habituated to, to that kind of lifestyle where you're, you're optimized for survival. So there's high chance your family will not survive or parts of your family will not survive. I'm trying to help you survive. That's why I created this show, COVID-19 Update by Hirad, to help you and your children survive. Obviously, you're free to do what you want, uh, but I'm giving you advice that can help you survive. I mean, I hope you take it because I want you to learn. That's why I created this show. Uh, but obviously, you do what you want. Your life is free, you're not a slave. But if you take risks, you know, you know it gets risky. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I'm gonna do a cheer for my co uh, cohort members. I, I love you guys, you know, my CML 2020 members. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna do a cheer for you guys because I know Hopefully not, but I think, you know, many of us are going to die at 5 to 10 before Christmas. So we need to celebrate our present, our us right now, you know. So uh, CNL, CNL 2020, CNL, CNL 2020, Georgetown University, clinical nurse leader, yay, we're pinned in May, yay. So, um, yeah, so, um, you know, um, Harry's looking at me. <laughs> you know, with, with, you know, respect. <laughs> you know, Harry has respect for me for some reason. I don't know why, but he does. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, you know, I want you and your family to live. That's why I created this show. The reason I talk about Romans chapter one is because God exists and he has his rules and regulations that he has shown us through Romans chapter one. That's why I share it, because God is an actor. He's involved in history, right? Um, he's not like, just a clockmaker letting the clock run its own, like he has said. That's not how he is. And we see that from the Bible and throughout 2,000 years of Christian history or Western civilization history, we see God actively involved in history. So, uh, yeah, the theists were wrong. Um, yeah. Thomas Jefferson was a deist. So was Benjamin Franklin. They're all wrong. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I, you know, don't forget to wear a mask tomorrow. I don't want you to die from COVID. As I said, it doesn't matter if you're born again Christian. It doesn't matter if you love the Lord. If you don't have a mask on, you'll get COVID and die. Um, yeah, it just, you know, it, it's like aging. It doesn't matter if you're born again. It doesn't matter if you love Jesus. You're going to age. Right? Your teeth are going to fall off. Doesn't matter if you're born again. If you doesn't matter if you love Jesus. 
because you are under the laws of nature. Right? Until Jesus comes back, it can be a resurrected body. You're under the laws of nature. So if you don't wear a mask, you're going to get COVID and die. You could. I mean, you know, you may not get it, but you could get COVID and die. And that's what I'm saying. Make sure you wear a mask to church tomorrow. And at church, just look at the front. Don't be talking to people, like yapping away. You're not there to, like, socialize with people. You're there to worship God. So go to the church, worship God, come home. You want to socialize with your church members? Do it over Zoom, you know, or phone, or you know, Skype. You know, go to church, worship God, come home. Okay. Uh, if you follow my, uh, you know, advice, there's high chance you won't get COVID. I mean, it's not 100% foolproof, you know, because if you, when you're around people, you're gonna get COVID. But if you're careful, you know, there's a higher chance that you won't. And you know, obviously, go to church. This guy wants you to worship at his house. You know, his house is a great house. Um, yeah, but you know, uh, but don't forget, you're not bulletproof. You know, you can get COVID and die. Doesn't matter if you're born again. Doesn't matter if you love Jesus. Uh, so make sure you wear a mask uh, tomorrow. Um, and you, make sure you talk with mask on. You need to cover your nose. I see people not covering their nose. What's the point of having a mask? If you don't cover your nose, it's a respiratory virus, which means it goes in through the way you breathe. This is the best mask to wear. It's called a surgical mask. It has uh, three layers of protection. Uh, this allows you to talk and breathe through the mask. You see, cloth, cloth mask, you know, they're not as protected. Uh, so I recommend you get one of these, you know, surgical mask and you buy a box of 50 from Amazon. Um, yeah, so that's uh, buy a lot of boxes, obviously. Uh, yeah, but make sure you know you, you gotta squeeze this thing here, you know. Make sure it sticks to your face. I mean, you know, you, you gotta make sure all the your you, you know your face is your nose and mouth are protected. Some scientists say COVID can go through your eyes, so uh, it's not a bad idea to get goggles. Uh, yeah, I mean it's better to live right than die. You don't get glasses or something, but you gotta block your eyes somehow. So when people are talking to you, you, especially people who are inconsiderate and not wearing a mask, the spit flies out every time they talk, right? Going to your eyes. And if these scientists are correct, saying that you can get COVID through your eyes, you, you know, just get one of these glasses, you know? That's, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah, I want you to live. So I want to help you, right? The show is created to help you. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't believe in the liberal media. Don't believe the lies of the liberal media that there's going to be a cure, that there's going to be a vaccine, until they work. Who cares what people are saying, right? Right? I mean, you could say there's fountain of youth, fountain of youth all you want, until you actually go in, take a dip and become young in the fountain of youth. All the words are useless. Same with the vaccine talk, same with the cure talk. All that talk is useless. It's just basically lies because it's not true, right? We don't have a vaccine now. We don't have a cure now. All the talk about it is not going to change that. So live in the truth, live in the reality. That's what I'm saying. There are ways to survive COVID. And I'm going to give you the truthful, realistic ways to survive COVID. Not like I'm not going to promise you there's going to be a vaccine because that's a lie. I'm not going to promise you there's going to be a cure because that's a lie. It's like somebody saying that, you know, they have a vaccine against cancer. That's a lie. Until you show me the money, there's no money. Until, you know, like that movie. Oh yeah, Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Show me the money, show me the money. Can I get a five with that? Can I get a five? Show me the money. If you don't show me an actual vaccine that works, there's no vaccine. That is the truth. If there is, if, if there's nothing that is actually curing, um, COVID-19, all the talk about a cure is useless. It just lies, right? Because it's not truth, then it's a lie, right? I mean, half truth is a lie. I mean, if it's not curing COVID, then it's, it's, there's no cure. You can talk to you blue in the face, but if there is no cure, right? Show me the money. Give me a five on the cure. Give me a five on the cure that works. Right? Until you show me the cure that works, there's no cure. Right? 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 Yeah. 
Yeah, I want you to live. That's why I created this show, COVID-19 Update by Hirak. Do not believe in the liberal media that promises you all these lies. You know, I feel bad for you New Yorkers out there because Governor, Governor Cuomo, the Democrat, signed your death sentence. He's going to open up your New York schools. You're going to have like thousands, maybe even millions by in the winter because the Democrats, they don't care about life. You know, I care about life. That's why I'm against abortion. But these Democrats, they don't care about life. That's why they're open up schools. 40% of New York City public school children are Hispanic, right? You know, uh, and uh, you know, there. I read some articles uh, that says like, uh, like Hispanic and African American children are more vulnerable to COVID-19. Maybe because you know a lot of them have asthma. Because when you live in poor neighborhoods. You know, you have like mold and, you know, you have cockroaches. Cockroaches can give you asthma. I don't know if you knew that, but they can. So, you know, uh, the socioeconomic conditions, social determinants of health, um, makes it that, uh, you know, a lot of people who live in poor neighborhoods, children, you know, they have respiratory problems. Uh, and, and, and so it makes sense that they can get COVID and die. That may be why it's easier for them to die. Uh, I mean, different studies say different things, but I mean, Governor Cuomo of New York basically signed a death sentence, New York children. I feel bad for you because he did not learn from last time, from peak one, first wave, what can happen to people. He just, he didn't learn his lesson. You know, this is so much like Democrats, you know, Governor Cuomo, I mean, yeah, I, I feel bad for you in New York because you're headed for massive deaths in the winter time. We saw what happened last time. We know this is exactly what's going to happen this time. So you're headed to death. I feel bad for you for having such a uh, democratic government, you know? <laughs> Cuomo, you know? Yeah. And who wants to open up all the schools? I mean, geez, it's ridiculous. Um, yeah. Um, but I feel bad for you in New York. But I do, because I want you to live, you know, uh, those of you uh, who, uh, who, uh, who, who want to live need to follow my guidance, you know. Uh, I would recommend you not sending your children to school, even if the school is open. Uh, but, you know, obviously you do what you want. It's your freedom. You know, I, I lobbied and I advocated for all the school districts in my Virginia's 8th district where I'm running for U.S. Congress to shut down and have 100% online class. I lobbied for three months and I got all the schools here to close. So praise the Lord, you know. I'm trying to save your lives, you know. I mean, so, you know, I worked hard in my district, Virginia's 8th district, to close all the public schools down and, and they did. Thank God. So I don't want these kids to die here in Virginia's 8th district. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I'm, I thank God for that. Uh, and District of Columbia Public Schools, you know, it, uh, it's 100% online, thank God for that, so they don't have to die, uh, at least by going to school. And, you know, uh, Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, it's going 100% online, uh, thank God for that, you know, so the, the kids there will not have to die from COVID, at least, you know, from school setting. Obviously, as I said, socialize only at home with only your family, physically, you know? I mean, you could Zoom or Skype all you want, but you know, physically, you should only socialize with your own family members. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, what's your priority? Do you want to survive COVID or not? If your priority is to survive COVID, this is what you need to do. There's no other way. This is a killer virus that's spreading. And it's going to be here for like years and years and years. So get used to it, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, what can you do? You know, life is life. Science is science. This is what we have, right? Now, I'm not going to lie to you like the liberal media. Oh, there's going to be a cure. Oh, there's going to be a vaccine. All these lies, 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 lies. Okay? Live in the reality. I mean, obviously, I want scientists to work hard to get a vaccine or a cure. But I'm saying until there is a vaccine, until there's a cure, everything everybody's promising, that's all lies. Can I get a five on that? Let's live in the truth. Live in the truth. Can I get a live? Truth matters. Let's live in the truth. Um, I'm sure a lot of you that are watching this show will die by before Christmas. 
unfortunately, I mean, I don't want you to die, but you know, some of you are still gapping away with people and that's how you get COVID. You may miss it for a few weeks, but you're going to get it at one of those yapping moments. Um, yeah, and you have yourself to blame because what did Hira Christian Kim say? Do not be yapping away with people close at a close distance, right? I give you advice. I mean, you do what you want. You're free to do what you want. You're like, you're not a slave. But if you're going to be yapping away with each other at close distance, I'm like, oh, I don't have COVID yet. And I talk to people all the time. One of these days, you're going to get COVID and die. It's like playing Russian roulette. Yapping away with people is like playing Russian roulette. Yeah, there's like five chambers that are empty. But there's one chamber that's like, has a bullet in it, it's going to kill you. Yeah, yap away, yap away. That's what's going to happen to you. I told you, like, use Zoom, Skype, phone. If you want to socialize with people, don't be yapping away at close distance. But you know, I mean, you do what you want. You're not a slave. Do what you want. You have freedom. But know that there are consequences to what you do. Yap away. One of these things, that Russian roulette, you know, filled chamber is going to get you. That's COVID-19. One of these persons you talk to will be filled with COVID, and that's your Russian roulette roulette. Yeah. So I'm just giving you advice, things to think about, because I want you to live, right? You do what you want. You're free to do what you want. But remember, there are consequences to what you do. Consequences to yourself, consequences to your children. There are consequences to whatever you do. So don't forget that. Can I get a five on the truth? Yeah, give me a five. Give me a five on the truth. So, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, don't forget your mask tomorrow. And order the 50 boxes of uh, surgical mask. This is what it is, a three ply out, fly of protection. Uh, yeah, get, get it for yourself, get it for your children. Um, yeah, you gotta get, you know, you know, it's like anything, you know, you gotta get quality mask if you want your family to survive. I mean, geez, we're in it for the long haul. You don't get like, you know, I mean, I mean, you're gonna like, 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 you're gonna gamble with your life. For God's sake, I mean, don't gamble with your life. It's not like in a reusable plastic bag or reusable bag for grocery shopping. There's no life involved. <laughs> you know, when you're talking about your life, you gotta, you gotta take it seriously, you know? I mean, you know, um, yeah, that, that's all I'm saying. I mean, if you do what you want, you're free. You're not a slave. You do what you want. But I give you advice that's going to save your life, your children's life. You know, that's why this show is valuable. You should tell all your friends, your family, your neighbors, your coworkers, watch this show. Um, parent teacher uh, uh, association members, you know, tell everybody to watch this show. Because this show gives you advice that can save your life. Obviously, you take it or leave it, that's your freedom. But this show will give you truth. Can I get a five on the truth? I'm not gonna be lying to you like the fake media. Oh, there's gonna be a vaccine. Oh, there's gonna be a cure. These are all lies. Until you show me the money, there's no money. You see what I'm saying? Can I, can I get a five? Can I get a five with that? Yeah. So uh, Jerry Maguire, if you haven't seen the movie Jerry Maguire, I say watch it. It's a funny movie. I really like Jerry Maguire. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just want to say once again, make sure you wear a mask. Uh, at church tomorrow and do not take it off. Make sure your nose, the top part is staying above your nose because you breathe through your nose, you're breathing COVID. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just trying to take care of you, right? I'm just trying to take care of you here with my show, COVID-19 Update by Hirak. Um, yeah, and don't forget to vote for me on November 3rd, 2020. Um, yeah, general election. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, I mean, if you're lucky, I'll become your congressman. And I'll go to Washington, D.C., clean up the corruption, save you from COVID. If you're lucky. Let's see if you are. But, uh, yeah. So I fight for you, so fight for me. I fight for you, so fight for me. Um, yeah. So I uh, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, this is a daily show, as you know. Uh, and it's starting on April 2nd. So if you missed other episodes, I say catch up on the shows, you know, because they all have, like, very important information on them. Um, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, I guess I'll just bid you uh, adieu for now, but I'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. 
Uh, I hope that um, you'll be well and your family will be well too. See you tomorrow. Bye.